Perfect. So let's take a look at what's on our papers today. I have the Star newspaper and in front of me, the People Daily. Let me start with the Star. Raila Kalonzo Gideon to attend Jubilee NDC. Raila Kalonzo Gideon to attend Jubilee NDC. That's how it looks like. Uh, we have got the pictorials of uh, Brigadier, retired John Kibaso, Warioba, who is now the prison's boss during the swearing in yesterday at State House. And on the right, we have got the sacked and uh, rather former Kenya Prison Service Commissioner General Wycliffe Ogalo, who was fired and subsequently arrested yesterday. I will give you more details on that. Uh, still on the header there, it is not clear if Mosale Mudavadi of ANC and Ford Kenya's Wetangula will be invited to the Jubilee NDC. Jamboree will showcase the making of a powerful political machine. All right. Oka holds crisis talks to campaign in Bungoma and Kitale this weekend. And uh, Mudaura shadow, but more than a mouthpiece, says Machako's governor, Mutua. All right. So the story there of uh, the terrorists who escaped from the maximum security facility, that is their uh, committee, uh, there's a story says that terror fugitives left physically challenged cellmate behind. And the story says that um, the three convicts who are serving jail terms of, uh, for terrorism-related crimes at Kamiti Maximum Prison left their cellmate because he could not move unaided. The convict is physically challenged. There were four in the cell and... Uh, when a roll call was called, uh, was conducted in the morning on Monday, the remaining convict was asked how many they were in the cell, and he, responds, uh, it is, he responded saying four. The two warders did not physically check to confirm that until 9 a.m. when they were serving food. It has now emerged that um, uh, it said that they then used... Uh, it has now revealed that a cavity containing items for their escape was also found. They then used a rope made from pieces of cloth and an old one that, that seemed to have been bought or brought rather there for the mission to scale two 10-meter walls and drop to a field behind Block A6. That's a story that is worth reading there. Humiliated Ogalo calls off press briefing in last minute. Um, President Uhuru Kenyatta yesterday sacked, yesterday sacked um, Wycliffe Ogalo as Commissioner General of the Kenya Prison Service. The sacking of Ogalo followed a meeting the President held with the top officials at the Interior Ministry, led by Interior CS Fred Matiangi, over the escape of three terror convicts from Kamiti Maximum Prison. Uhuru then appointed and witnessed the swearing in of Ogalo's successor, that is Brigadier Retired John Kibaso Warioba. Uh, moving very quickly to uh, the next page here. Raila Kalonzo Gideon to attend the NDC. It's now said that uh, this event will be the first formal meeting that Raila will be attending as President Uhuru Kenyatta firms up his succession plan with Jubilee set to endorse Raila for the presidency. Uh, the NDC comes at a critical moment. The outfit is stating itself after months of bitter feuds with Deputy President William Ruto. The president is also expected to use the occasion to spell out his legacy achievements, detail his points of departure from Ruto, and unveil the party's 2022 roadmap. Now, critically, Uhuru will also kick out Ruto from his position as the Jubilee Deputy Party leader as he firms up his grip at the helm to craft a 2022 formula with Raila. So political parties have a tradition of inviting their, part their partners uh, during NDCs as a gesture of goodwill and political partnership. So that event will happen on November 30th. On November 30th, and uh, it's now said that it will show a might and how the lineup will look like come 2022. And finally, we have got our new deputy governor. Kananu picks city hall chief of staff as deputy governor. Governor says that she considered his leadership qualities, his leadership qualities rather, and abilities. Who am I speaking about? I'm talking about 
uh, former councillor Paul Mutunga Mutungi to deputize Anne Kanano. The vacancy arose after she was sworn in on Tuesday as the third Nairobi governor and first woman to hold the position. So before his um, appointment, while picking Mutunga, Kananu said that she considered his leadership qualities and competence among other issues. So, as we usually said here, Kazi Kwenu to the deputy governor and the governor herself. Now it's time to work. Jen. Now let's have a look at what the Daily Nation has for us today. Some of those stories have, uh, you've already mentioned, um, but just to add on to some of the stories that have been featured here, starting with... Um the continued visiting of the United States Secretary of State, that is Antony Blinken. And yesterday he did have a number of meetings, one of which included um, civil groups and uh, one activist group uh, for that matter. And uh, from that meeting he was able to address the public through a conference and he was, you know, keen to emphasize that we need to stop um, and ensure that democracy prevails and enforced disappearances is something that security operations uh, need to take into huge consideration and must be operating within the law. Um, he also talked about the polls and of course the war against terror as a general conversation which is something that we do know our president has also been on about. That has been featured here. We'll be giving you more details in not too long. Again, uh, the story concerning uh, the prison's purge has been featured here. It's actually the main read right here on the front page of the Daily Nation. Um, uh, sacked and arrested after a string of jailbreaks by convicted hardcore criminals and suspicion of collusion, President Kenyatta moves uh, swiftly to change the command at the Kenya Prison Service, kicking out the Commissioner General and ordering the arrest of committee bosses. Uh, we will be giving you details as has been captured on the different dailies um, this morning. Then there's also here a, a piece concerning how Ruto vows to help uplift 14 million youth that have been listed on CRB. The question is how? I'll be telling you how he intends to do that in a bit. And of course, that story concerning uh, the succession with a secret wise being locked out of inheritance, of course, is something that people have had quite a lot to say about, especially on the socials. Of course, we'll be giving you the facts as per what was gazetted. So that or rather assented into law. We'll be giving all uh, you those details in a bit. And finally, the uh, case concerning High Court Judge Sayed Chitembwe, after he rubbished off the expose that was put out by former Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko, saying that he will also not step aside to pave way for any investigation because his conscious is clear and that video has been edited and doctored to you know incriminate him details coming up in a bit ray the standard also has similar headers as you've heard there and uh the scribe here has not taken to church has not taken us to sunday school mm. uh, but he says or she says actually let me see who, who's written this byline mm -hmm. let's get the name let's get the name just as a matter of fact, uh, this is by uh, who? Uh, news desk. They have just said the news desk, and we all know why. <laughs> Sonko matters. So Shitembwe responds to Sonko's tip. Secret recording in an exclusive interview, Judge downplays videos making rounds on social media, describing them as edited and manipulated to mm. fit a specific narrative. But he admits he knows the recorded man. So if you've come across that particular video, the man in that particular uh, clip is none other than, is it the brother? Yes. Of the he same. actually said it's not a brother or a distant cousin or anything. They just come from the same uh, small community. <laughs> yes. He did admit to knowing the man. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's not related to him in any shape, manner, or form. Uh huh. Lakini, mm. alisema kwa clip ni ndugu yake. Actually, mm. he was speaking in Swahili. Okay, so that's the front page. That's uh, one of the stories that I made headlines on this particular daily, as well as matters of national security. That's a prison boss who's been sacked and grilled over committee. However, 
from the National Police uh, Twitter page yesterday. They disputed those claims. They just said they were making a smooth transition for Ogola, who is handed over, mm -hmm. uh, you know, his tools of trade, so to speak, to the incumbent who was already sworn in. So that has also been captured in the front page. Matters of, you know, um, Mpango Wakando being locked out of wealth inheritance, so to speak. So those are the three main stories that have been captured on the front page of the Standard this morning, uh, as well as, uh, you know, matters of banks, why they reap a lot when... Um, uh, from loan repayments, we're talking about interest rates and such. We're going to be giving details. So if you allow me, I'd want us to open this conversation with... Let the there ish. be chaos. <laughs> let there be chaos, as they say, <laughs> venom, let there be chaos. Now the question is, and I like what Victor started by asking, has the law of succession amendment bill of 2019 affected you in any way? And this is what? now. In as much as uh, the new law has locked out Mpango Wakando out of inheritance, there is something that you also need to know. This is not entirely black and white. Mm. Why? Because these secret lovers have to prove that their deceased partners had maintained them what for least? two years if they are to inherit property. Mm. Habari ndio hiyo. If you can prove that that person in your life had <laughs> taken care of you in the last two years, then you can inherit property. And there was a conversation that we had, I think, some weeks back, and I mentioned and said, it's good to keep track of your investments, receipts, <laughs> if you've not been keeping the receipts. My friends, it's a high time we need to keep these receipts. You never know, they may actually come in handy. Mm -hmm. If you're not into some hanky-panky kind of business, it's good to keep your receipts. They, you know, they, they just give you a paper trail. You know, like, I did this, I did this. Also, in bookkeeping, they really help. Has been your spending, and such and such. Now you have to prove, if you are a secret partner, which I do not advocate for anyway, if you ask my opinion. If someone is with you, let them put you forth into the world. Not those people who have someone in their life, but they post a foot, a finger, a tie, a shoe. Unclaimed assets. Unclaimed assets, <laughs> you know? It's a, so if you want to be claimed and actually inherit, you gotta show, we have to show you to the world. Regina, so, Victor, what uh, do you have to say in regard to this I, matter? I, I'm just looking at the positive side of this bill. Mm -hmm. um, because, actually, it's, it's all over the papers. New property law puts mistresses on a tight leash. Mm -hmm. Legislation decrees secret lovers will not inherit partners' property, however children will. So, let's just look at the positive of that, that bit alone. Yes. If you are contemplating, for example, to have a relationship with someone, I'm calling it a relationship with due respect, and then along the way something happens, then um, out of that a child is born or two kids are born or even three, and then you separate. So if you have that mindset of I want to date this person so that at the end of the day I will benefit from, uh, you know, uh, from, 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 from his wealth mm. and money and what have you, then you are walking that tight leash. So, you know, kids are always innocent in such situations. Absolutely. So that's why the law will protect, protect the kids. Them. But you as an adult, you are getting to something. The law actually at this point will assume that you are so much aware of the repercussion so that if you're going into something, you have to make it clear. Victor, this is it. If it doesn't, to Kai Khan, because you don't want to suffer at the end of the day seeing your kids enjoy the proceeds of inheritance from their perceived dad, but you, you are left aside. Um, in most circumstances, actually, it's, uh, it's the, uh, the adults who take charge, you know, mm. the, the signing of the papers and the transfer and, trust. and the trust. So it's, it's, uh, it's going to create some sense of responsibility moving forward, uh, if you ask me, some sense of responsibility so that um, people who are thinking after this bill, they, it's now a law, if you're thinking of doing something of this kind, then just know that the law prohibits you from inheriting. If at all, 
you had some mind somewhere that um, even men, it's now going to put us in a very serious position so that the level of responsibility as far as this bill is concerned, perhaps it's going to change because you'll not argue with the court. This is the law. Now, the you've talked side. about men Vic. I'd want us to go back uh, to um, an issue, uh, mm. a matter of inheritance and a court battle that we are still to find out where it is at. And this is yeah. after the demise of Laboso. Remember, there was a court case that ensued with the sisters claiming that the husband had no right uh, to the property. This particular law, law now makes it that very clear. And it goes on to say, a spouse in the new law means husband or wife as defined under the Marriage Act of 2014. This means that husbands will automatically inherit their deceased wife's property. Because mm. this has been quite a gray area, so to speak. For yeah. most widows, yeah. Especially where the woman had property. And this goes back to the question, who is your next of kin? Who is your next of kin, Victor? Women, a majority of women, we have been accused that uh, we put our mothers as our next of kin. Mm. Yet your mother is 20, 30 years older than you, but your mother is your next of kin. Then you put in the children, then your spouse comes in at a measly 5% of your earnings or rather your property and such who is your next of kin now with this particular law it's very clear that a man also can inherit the wife's property mm. without qualms and also those who are uh, dependents actually this new law uh, takes away the secret lovers from the list of dependents however if they can prove they have been maintained by this person for a period of two years then they can lay claim to inheritance. On the other hand, is that we know we come from an African society and family, the family unit, is something that we really value. So you'll find someone taking care of their parents, their elderly parents, their cousins, their uncles, and such. So also these ones are included as dependents. Mm. Only if the deceased had been maintaining them. So if he, had been, he or she had been maintaining them, then they are also considered dependents. This means parents, grandparents, uh, grandchildren, strapped children, children that the deceased had taken into his family as his or her own brothers and sisters, as well as half-brothers, will be maintained and had been maintained. And so, just to add to that, Regina... Yeah. Um, it goes on to say that um, the families of the, the dependents of the deceased shall not be compelled to continue helping those whom the dead was helping or sharing their wealth with them. Okay? Mm -hmm. So they will not be compelled. And I think also um, we need to just, for the benefit of our viewers, just mention who, who those dependents are as to what that bill had said, uh, because I think this paper got it the other way around, because here they say that um, they have categorized secret wives, stepchildren, half-brothers, half-sisters, um, among others, as those who have been left out when it comes to this particular term as dependents. But looking at the actual bill, it indicates that... Um, it has gone ahead to define who these dependents are. Uh, and let me just get it for you uh, for the purposes of clarity. Yeah, because I think it's the other way around. Those that have been defined as dependents in this particular uh, Kaluma bill, as it is being referred to, or those that are stand to benefit from the wealth that is left behind mm. by the deceased. Let me quickly get it. Where is it? Uh, any, before we get it from that, but I think this particular dependence defines um, the immediate children, of course, and the wife, as well as uh, the deceased uh, parents, grandparents, grandchildren, stepchildren, half brothers, or half sisters. All those are considered as dependents of the deceased. Okay, so these are the ones that have been will be catered for 
in the event, uh, in the sudden demise of a person who was taking care of them, they are considered as dependents and they will be entitled to the estate or wealth that is left behind. I think we needed to make that mm. clear. Yeah. This paper got it the other way around. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, we'll be seeing And it's interesting, um, uh, just before you guys jump in, I was actually going through the people daily because looking mm. at um, the background to this particular amendment yeah. uh, comes from a number of cases that uh, Kaluma had handled. He mm. even actually mentioned there's uh, one of the cases where the deceased during the funeral, 20 women showed up to claim... 20. 20. They showed up to claim part, to claim their rights and yeah. part of the estate that was left behind by I don't know it was which MP or some. It's actually there on the People Daily. Mm. Another incident. There was so many women who showed up to claim, and by the time it was being settled, one woman had squandered almost half of the entire property that was left behind. Mm. And this is something that happens so often because during funerals, yeah. that is when people yes, tend to think, show up. I think up. this bill is set to, to deter. To streamline. To streamline mm -hmm. such kind of behaviors because, you know, the dead cannot tell what's happening out there. Dead um, men tell no tales. Exactly. So <laughs> it will be interesting. And by the way, if you can get that bill, read it and understand what it says. And know knowledge the exceptions, is, yeah. Exactly. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Okay. Okay, to the People Daily, uh, we have got the PD here on the front page, nothing much. Uh, prison's boss takes the fall for jailbreak. Of course, we have that story there. Ogalo and committee commandant arrested for the recent escape of terror uh, uh, convicts. President calls for change in unit that has been covered in almost all the newspapers here. And of course, that story that we've just been talked about, uh, new property law puts mistresses on a tight leash. Legislation decreased. Secret lovers will not inherit partners' property, however children will. Uh, if you can get that copy, you should read it and arm yourself with that valuable knowledge. Pressure mounts on high court judge to quit bench. Despite troubles that have rocked his career, Justice Said Chitembwe has uh, stoically fought and emerged victorious to save his position. And now uh, leading the onslaught against Chitembwe uh, uh, is now lost sight of Kenya President Nelson Harvey, who called on the Judicial Service Commission, JSC, to move fast and investigate the allegations raised by former Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko with a view to kicking him out of the bench. That is on the second page there. And state given seven days to, cha to charge Nick Mwendoa. The government has been ordered to charge suspended president of Football Kenya Federation, Nick Mwendoa, within seven days. The development comes after Milimani senior resident magistrate, uh, that is Wandia Nyamo, yesterday declined application by the prosecution to detain him for 14 days at Gigiri police station pending ongoing investigations into the alleged misuse of public funds at the Federation. Okay, and uh, quickly into some politics. Fights intensify for youth vote, uh, vote ahead of 2022. Hopefuls continue to make pledges targeting youth and have been actively reaching out to them uh, in their rallies. And we have got Ray Lodinga, Deputy President D.P. Ruto, we have got Kalozo Musioka and, of course, Musala Mudavadi. Uh, and still on some politics, Ruto allies from Mount Kenya say no to Raila candidature. Leaders adamant that their only preferred candidate for the top seat is the DP. So the leaders included Meru Senator Mithika Linturi um, and uh, so much more saying that uh, Central Kenya should not vote in for Raila. Politics is just amazing today is that today is that never take this thing seriously <laughs> use one governor manda go over singishu said siyasa usiweke kwa kwa roho weka kwa mapafu you breathe in and out breathe in and out and that's how politicians survive they know that rule siweke kwa roho siweke kwa roho okay <laughs> and in fact one of the papers said that uh they are trailing each other. When you look at how Raila is operating, Ruto is coping the same. So when Raula, Raila goes to uh, location X, next, Ruto will also go to the same, same position. So they are trailing each other. So you do as I undo. Mm -hmm. You do as I undo. You come, I come. That's, that's the game. Mm -hmm. And I understand it very well.
<laughs> they have got the think tanks working for them. Very interesting when it comes to politics. Okay. So now, as uh, we near the close of this particular segment, mm. let me just uh, bring it to a close by looking at this particular piece. It's so interesting because this, I do believe, will resonate with each and every one of us if not now, at some point in our past or in the near future. And this is about um, narcissists. So this entire piece um, goes on to give you such great detail, but in just, um, to sum it up, um, they talk of narcissists, uh, and you may be wondering what who a narcissist is, and maybe you may have encountered them at one point, but here they define a narcissist as, um, or other narcissists, as people with a toxic sense of self-centeredness, okay? They believe the world revolves around them. It is either their way or the highway. And being around these people will leave you heartbroken. I believe in character development, because it brings a lot of emotional instability. And here, just uh, they've gone on to give some traits that you know, if you did not know, you can be able to now make sense of it all. Some traits uh, of narcissists. Uh, they go on to say that, uh, but then narcissism is a legitimate mental disorder. Mm. Okay, let's just start there. So they go on to give some of those uh, traits that you need to look out for. They are not interested in other people's feelings. They lack remorse, even when, uh, remorse rather, even when it is obvious that they are on the wrong, okay? They would never apologize. And in the rare cases that they do, all right? It is. Uh, it will be detached and half-hearted, and uh, due to their lack of empathy, they belittle others. Uh, they ensure that they dominate, and uh, they also say they have an inflated sense of self-importance, which lead to delusional tendencies. They feed on praise and adoration. Uh, they constantly want to be complimented due to their fragile egos. They create a fantasy world for themselves where everything is perfect. Um, they can't handle disappointment and gaslighting is their weapon of choice they convince themselves that they are always right they will blatantly lie to your face uh, about something that is very obvious you know you could be saying this is a black lead but they will say that is white it's white you know and to you just to prove it. that they are right um, they want to control every cent uh, aspect of your life they have no sense of privacy they will violate every detail of your intimate life and they will leave you questioning your sanity huh. yeah okay. and with that ladies and gentlemen before we go we hope you're empowered to don't, come with. just we, tell them to watch me, 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 there's a story here and I feel I feel so bad about it man Baringo Homer Bay top in lack of toilets my county people <laughs> I wanna. The country people. My county. <laughs> okay, that's a search which was done by UNICEF. <laughs> by UNICEF. <laughs> green toilet. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a really sad situation. And there's also another piece here concerning um, a shortage of uh, condoms in the country. One of the barrier <laughs> methods that has led to increased um, teen pregnancies. HIV and AIDS, as well as sexually transmitted diseases, and especially among the youth. It's a funny mm. world. We are living in interesting times. <laughs> anyway, we grab a copy of whichever daily you feel best yeah. resonates with you to get this and much more details. We want to take a very quick breath at Regina King. Regina, <laughs> Apple. No, you I so red. Uh, Regina, you I, I want you to so say red. something, but I don't know how to put it across because you've raised two issues here. In a voice. You've talked in a voice about in a face. narcissism. Hmm. And I'm thinking if anyone has ever dealt with a narcissistic person, you know you're a survivor. Yes, you are. Especially yeah. when it comes to your mental health. Mm -hmm. Someone who makes you question if yes, you sanity. are sane or not mm. is someone you do not need within your circles. If, actually, there's a movie called um, Gaslight, Gaslight, 1971. <laughs> Find that film, watch it then it will just give you the basics of what narcissism is all about. And unfortunately, there are majority of narcissists around us. Mm -hmm. Someone will tell you, by the way, you've put off the lights, and the lights are on. And my friend, you will be questioning if indeed those lights are on or off. It is that bad. All right. Yes. We take a quick breath, and we'll be right back with more entertainment.